Sol Solar. Sol Solar was the adopted name of Oscar Agustin, Alejandro Schultz Solari, December 14, 1887, April 9, 1963, Argentine painter, sculptor, writer, and inventor of imaginary languages. Biography He was born in San Fernando, Buenos Aires province, in the bosom of a cosmopolitan family. His father, Elmo Schultz Riga of Baltic German origin, was born in the Latvian city of Riga, at that time part of Imperial Russia. His mother, originally from Italy, was named Agustina Solori. He was educated in Buenos Aires, first as a musician, then as an architect, although he never completed his architectural studies. After working as a school teacher and holding a series of minor jobs in the municipal bureaucracy, on April 5, 1912, he set out on the ship England carrier, supposedly to work his passage to Hong Kong, but he disembarked in London and made his way to Turin. He returned to London to meet up with his mother and aunt, with whom he traveled to Paris, Turin again, Genoa and his mother's native Zogli. Over the following few years, despite the onset of World War I, he would move among these cities, as well as tours Marseille and Florence. Towards the end of the war he served, at the Argentine consulate in Milan. During the years of the war, he struck up what was to be a lifelong friendship with Argentine artist Emilio Petaruti, then a young man living in Italy and associated with the Futurists. Also around that time, he began to pay more attention to painting, first with watercolor which would always remain his main medium as a painter, although he gradually began working in tempera and very occasionally oils. He also adopted the pen name of Sol Solar. His first major exhibition of his art was in 1920 in Milan, together with sculptor Arturo Martini. In 1916, Schulz Solari first signed his work Sol Solar, ostensibly for the purposes to simplify the phonetics of his name, but an examination of the adopted name reveals that the first name is the reverse of Lux, which means light in Latin. Combined with Solar, the name reads as the light of the sun, and demonstrates the artist's affinity for the universal source of light and energy. His father's name Schulz and Zoll are pronounced the same in Spanish. He gave himself an extraterrestrial identity by modifying his parents' surnames and becoming Zoll Solar. The first name reflected light, or lux, spelled backwards the last. His maternal surname without the I was the sun itself. During the years that followed, he continued his travels, extending his orbit to Munich and Hamburg. In 1924, his work was exhibited in Paris in a show of Latin American artists. He also struck up an acquaintance with British mage Aleister Crowley and his mistress Lee Hersig, who held high hopes for his discipleship, but later that year he returned to Buenos Aires where he promptly became associated with the avant-garde Florida group a.k.a. Martin Fierro Group, a circle that also included George Louis Borges, with whom he was to keep. It was in this group that he also met poet and novelist Leopoldo Merchel, who would immortalize him as the astrologer Schultze in his famous novel Adan Buenos Aires. He began to exhibit frequently in the galleries of Buenos Aires, notably in a 1926 exhibition of modern painters that included Nora Borges' sister of George Louis Borges and Emilio Petaruti. Throughout the rest of his life, he would exhibit regularly in Buenos Aires and Montevideo, Uruguay, but he would not have another major European exhibition until his twilight years in 1962, a year before his death. In 1963, he died in his house at Tiger, Buenos Aires five years before his biography by Emilio Petaruti was published. Work and Interests Solar's paintings are mainly sculptures, often using striking contrasts and bright colors, typically in relatively small formats. His visual style seems equidistant between Wassily Kandinsky and Paul Klee on the one hand and Mark Chabot on the other. He also worked in some extremely unorthodox artistic media, such as modifying pianos, including a version with three rows of keys. The poet Fernando de Maria, in an essay Zol Solar y Paul Klee published in the Argentine magazine Lyra, 1971, 
and quoted extensively at one wrote, it is not easy for the human spirit to elevate itself from astrology to astronomy, but we would be making a mistake if we forget that an authentic astrologer, like Sol Solar, is close to the Solar had a strong interest in astrology. At least as early as 1939, he began to draw astrological charts. He also had a strong interest in Buddhism and believed strongly in reincarnation. He also developed his own set of tarot cards. His paintings reflect his religious beliefs, featuring objects as stairs, roads, and the representation of God. He invented two fully elaborated imaginary languages, symbols from which figure in his paintings, and was also an exponent of duodecimal mathematics. He said of himself, I am maestro of a writing no one reads yet. One of his invented languages was called neo Criollo, a poetic fusion of Portuguese and Spanish, which he reportedly would frequently use as a spoken language in talking to people. He also invented a panlingua, which aspired to be a world language linking mathematics, music, astrology, and the visual arts, an idea reminiscent of Hermann Hesse's glass bead game. Indeed, games were a particular interest of his, including his own invented version of chess, or more precisely non-chess. Outside of Argentina, Solar may best be known for his association with Borges. In 1940, he figured as a minor character in Borges's semi-fictional Tealon, Akbar or Tertius. In 1944, he illustrated a limited edition, 300 copies of Un Manilo para la Muerte, written by Borges and Adolfo Bioy Cassares, writing together under the pseudonym B. Suarez Lynch. He and Borges had common interests in German expressionistic poetry, the works of Emanuel Swedenborg, Algernon Charles Swinburne, and William Blake, and Eastern philosophy, especially Buddhism and the I Ching. Discussion of Entero and Fiordo. Entero, 1914, Watercolor on Paper. After a brief experimentation with oils, Sol chose the watercolors and tempera that would become his preferred media. Instead of large scale canvases, Sol painted on small sheets of paper, sometimes mounting his finished works on sheets of cardboard. One of his early works in what would become his signature format, Intero Burial demonstrates the confluence of Zol's internal thoughts and external influences. The images of a funeral procession of beings, possibly celestial, led by an angel figure floating above the ground. The profiles of the figures suggest pre-Columbian art, and possibly an ancient Egyptian influence as well. The angel figure, as well as the mourners, have luminous peaks above their heads, in a reimagining of halos. The shapes of the peaks are repeated by tongues of fire that point up from the bottom edge of the painting. The image strongly suggests an afterworld, but it is not clear from the image whether the environment correlates to tradition Christian understandings of heaven or hell. Sol Solar provides his viewer with a new image of an afterlife. Two figures hold a shrouded corpse, which is also surrounded by flames. The hands of the corpse are folded, but above the corpse, a figure resembling a fetus emerges. That Sol uses a fetus instead of an image of a deceased person of typical age leads one to read the image as a depiction of reincarnation, representing a break from traditional Catholic ideas of life and death and demonstrating the investigation into disparate spiritualities which would continue for the rest of Zoll's life. As the figures recede in the painting, Zoll reduces them to geometric shape. The forms cease to be recognizable as beings and then are transformed into what can be a tomb or portal. That all the mourners are of the same color as the temple indicates that they, just like the deceased, will make the same transition someday. Sol Solar's life during his twenties was marked by profound existential crisis. His writings at the time reveal a profound desire for creative expression, and a kind of angst caused by the profusion of ideas and thoughts he entertained, dazzling light, colors never seen, harmonies of ecstasies and of hell unheard of sounds, a new beauty that is mine. If my damaging sorrows are due to labor in childbirth, I am pregnant with an immense new world. 
Radoczyk describes Zull at this point in his life as a visionary ravidly opposed to the canons reigning in the Buenos Aires of his time. Like other artistically inclined people of his generation, Zull sought to study in Europe and settled for a time in Paris while it was an epicenter for avant-garde art. The city was home to the Cubists, while attracting Italian futurists, Russian artists, and participating in the dialogue about German Expressionism. There was also a fashion for sculpture and objects brought back to Europe by anthropologists and traders from African and Pacific Ocean colonies as well as the Americas. The artistic canons that Gradoxic refers to were propagated by the official Argentine art institutions, who favored visual representations associated with national icons. Painters like Carlos P. Ripamont, Cesaro Bernaldo de Quiros, and Fernando Fader extolled images of pampas landscapes and rural gaucho culture. The arrival of Spanish intellectuals, such as José Ortega y Gasset and Eugenio Dors, created a new discourse around art that was disseminated among writers and artists working toward an aesthetic modernity. Enteros firmly places Zul Solar as a member of this modernist Argentine movement. Rather than painting subjects recognizable as Argentine, Sol's focus is internal, painting from his own imagination. His early artistic output seems to represent the profusion of ideas and themes that grew out of Sol's contemplations. The flat shapes and bold colors used in the painting demonstrate a cubist influence. The faces of the figures, particularly the eyes and shapes of heads, can be seen as owing to the fashion for argent artifacts from Africa and the Americas mentioned above. Fiordo, 1943, tempera on paper mounted on board. The severe, bleak landscape in Fiordo suggests ancient Chinese and Japanese prints. Narrow mountains with undulating edges stab up from placid water. Here, Sol communicates his affinity with Asian forms and, in turn, ideas. The ladders that crisscross the mountains are described by Gradoxic as symbolizing spirituality both of the ascendant nature as well as with the possibility of descent. The single figure in the bottom corner suggests a hermetic existence, a difficult spiritual path that is mirrored in the steep staircases. The figure holds a book in one hand and what appears to be a lantern in the other, representing study and guidance. Sol tells his viewer that while spiritual pursuit can be arduous, others have established a path and they point the way. A structure appears atop one mountain, ostensibly a temple. None of the ladders lead directly to the mountain peak, however. The path twists and turns, and the doors cut into the mountain sides represent the stages, and possible moments of being waylaid, as one endeavors spiritually. From 1943 and 1944, Sol's painting was influenced by his thoughts of the Second World War. The sudden, powerful emergence of inhumanity and the potential effects on the world at large were very heavy on the artist. Radoczyk posits that Zoll reached his highest point of artistic expressivity in these ascetic paintings whose theme corresponded to that anguishing reality. Legacy Quotes Selected Exhibitions 1920 Zoll Solar and the sculptor Arturo Martini Galleria Art, Milan, November 27 to December 16, 1924. Exposition d'Art American Latin, Musi Galliera, Paris, March 15 to April 15, 1924. Primer, Salon Libre, Whitcomb, Buenos Aires, 1925. Salon de los Independientes, Buenos Aires, 1926. Exposition de Pinters Modernos, Amigos del Art, Buenos Aires. 1929, Zoll Solar, Amigos del Art, Buenos Aires, May Aries, 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 May Aries,
October 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 1940s All Solar Amigos del Art Buenos Aires 1949s All Solar Gallery Samos Buenos Aires 1951s All Solar Gallery Gian Buenos Aires, 1952 Pintura, Y Escultura Argentina de Est Siglo, Museo Nacional de Bellas Arts, Buenos Aires, 1953 Zol Solar, Galleria Van Riel, Sala V, Buenos Aires, 1963 Home Ages, Zol Solar, Museo Nacional de Bellas Arts, Buenos Aires, 1965 Zol Solar, Exposition Retrospectiva, Galleria Pro, Buenos Aires, 1966, Roman III Biennial Americana de Art, Home Ages All Solar, Museo Provincial de Bellas Arts, Cordoba, 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 1978, Zol Solar, Galleria Rubbers, Buenos Aires, 1993, Zol Solar, A Collector's Vision, Rachel Adler Gallery, New York, 1994, Zol Solar, the Architectures Courthold Institute Galleries, London, 2005 Zol Solar, Visions by Revelations, Colxi and Constantini, Buenos Aires, June 17 to August 15, 2013 Zol Solar and George Louis Borges, The Art of Friendship, America's Society, New York, April 18 to July 20, and Phoenix Art Museum, Phoenix, as September 21 to December 31. Selected works S Mido de Fenice's Oil on Board, C. 1914. Private Collection. Passage Con Monumento, Oil on Board, C. 1914. Private Collection, Buenos Aires. Dos Anjos, 1915. Watercolor on Paper. Museo Zol Solar, Buenos Aires. Entero. 1915 Watercolor on Paper, Museo Zol Solar, Buenos Aires. Offering to Quarry 1915 Watercolor on Paper Mounted on Card, Museo Zol Solar, Buenos Aires. Reptil Quay Sub 1920 Watercolor on Paper, Museo Zol Solar, Buenos Aires. Casas en Alto 1922 Watercolor on Paper, Museo Zol Solar, Buenos Aires. Graphia Antiga, 1939, Tempera on Paper, Museo Zol Solar, Buenos Aires. Fiordo, 1943, Tempera on Paper, Museo Zol Solar, Buenos Aires. Pan Game and Marionette I Ching at the Museum of Modern Art C, 1945. Cassie Plantis, 1946, Tempera on Paper, Museo Zol Solar, Buenos Aires. Bureau's Biombos, 1948, Watercolor on Paper, Museo Zol Solar, Buenos Aires. Pan Arbol, 1954, Watercolor on Paper, Museo Zol Solar, Buenos Aires. Cruz, 1954, Wood and Watercolor, Museo Zol Solar, Buenos Aires. Graphia, 1961, Tempera on Paper, Museo Zol Solar, Buenos Aires. My Prey Per to Min Guardian Joe, 1962, Tempera on Paper, Museo Zol Solar, Buenos Aires, 